What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show, Quest for Dough, where I am interviewing entrepreneurs or anyone who is starting their quest in life, whether it be a new business, uh, you know, a life venture, changing a career, want to become a sports athlete. I want to know your quest or your journey. I'm going to follow along. This podcast is isn't for someone who's already made it, isn't for someone who's already successful. There might be people I bring on that are like that so I can understand their quest, but I want to follow someone along who is just getting started. You know, this this podcast is to f- see the story behind everyone's journey. I want to know the details and I want to know what it takes to get to where you're at or to where you're going. And, you know, this is why I've started this podcast is I really want to know. So in this podcast, you'll hear me talk to them, you know, about what the business they're doing or what they're starting. I'll go back to the beginning where it started. I'll have them take me through the process of it all. And then what I'll do at the end is I'm going to say, okay, where are you at now? But where are you going to go in the future? What is your plan? And then I'm going to follow up with all these people and see kind of how their quest goes. And so I hope you guys enjoy this podcast and everything that we do and that you can follow along these other people's quests and them trying to, you know, do what they love. Today's episode, I'm going to bring on Spencer Merrifield. He is the owner of Lifetime Epoxy Utah. Um, He started this business where he just goes around and does epoxy in people's garage. He started it as just something to make some money while he was going through college. Found out that, you know, it can be turned into something a lot more. And he got super passionate about it. And I'm really excited for you guys to listen to his interview and where he's gotten. Because not only is he passionate about his epoxy business, he's now passionate about trying to change the contractor industry, which is really interesting um, because he thinks he, there's a hole there's a hole in the contract industry. So I'm going to interview him and bring him on. You guys can listen and I hope you guys enjoy this series of Quest for Dough and continue to listen. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and maybe give me a five stars if you want. I would love you forever and always. Um, I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to bring on Spencer now. Hi. You like it? It's official as it gets, bro. <laughs> it is. Okay, everyone, what's up? Welcome to the show. I'm here with uh, Spencer Merrifield, the owner and founder of Lifetime Epoxy Utah. Um, what they do is they do a high service and epoxy coatings. So I'm going to leave it over to him to explain because he's a lot better than I am. But go ahead, Spencer, explain what is Lifetime Epoxy? Yeah, so we're uh, we're just a, we're a local contractor business that I started a few years ago, and we specialize in, in concrete coating. Specifically, we really focus on... Um, you know, a lot of garage floor epoxies, but it's just a very high end version of that. And then metallic epoxy, which if you haven't seen what that is, a lot of people have never heard of that, but it's, it's really cool. Um, it's just a beautiful, almost marble looking flooring that we do. And, um, it's a, it's a high end floor, but, uh, we install those coatings. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a bulk of what mm-hmm. we do. You should go look at his Instagram, which is lifetime epoxy. Yeah. Lifetime epoxy, Utah. Um, it really is beautiful. Every time you guys post like your new floorings or like your marble floorings, I'm like, wow, those are, I want those in my house. <laughs> yeah, man. They're, or they're like, so cool. Or the, my garage. It looks really good. For sure. The more I, the more I do them, the more I have a passion for, uh, for installing them. And, uh, in the long run for the business, I probably won't be super involved in the installs for much longer. And I already know I'm going to miss that because I've, I've developed a big passion for, for dropping down these beautiful floors. Right. It's pretty cool. We will get that into that later. Your future, what you see, um, for sure. When we when we get a new place for Preche, you have to come in and do a nice, beautiful white marble one. Oh yes. Sir. Do you guys have a white marble? Yeah, flooring? absolutely, for sure. Okay, you yeah, I got a client. Give us two years. Heck yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so it's interesting to me. So we're gonna go back to the beginning and figure out how it started. But you know, a lot of people. When you start a business, people want to start like a software business or like, yeah. a, you know, a tech business. Same thing as what I just literally just said. But um, <laughs> yours is different. Yours is like a like a labor. Yeah. A hands on business. Yeah, for sure. It's a little unique, it de- especially now where entrepreneurship is so popping, so popular. And a lot of it's all all focused on, you know, 
either inventing a new product or, or software or an app or something brand new that's never been done. Honestly, for me, a few years ago, that's all I thought entrepreneurship was too. Right. So. Well, I like it. Okay. Well, let's just, let's dive in. So let's go to the beginning. So okay. I actually worked with Spencer a little over two years ago. Yeah. A place called Solution Reach doing sales. Yes, we did. Um, but. Dialing, so, dialing, dialing, bro. <laughs> just dialing every day. <laughs> More dials than you can count. Too many. So tell me, when when did this idea of doing an epoxy floor first come to your mind? Yeah, so it was in, it was kind of like the end of 2016, beginning of 2017. It originally was definitely not uh, a big business idea. It was more like, I'm going to college. I need to make money in the summer. And I, I really don't want to go do summer sales, which I have a lot of respect for everyone who does summer sales. Uh, but I really just felt like I could, I wanted to try something, um, something local. I wanted to do something that was my own thing and see if I could make, you know, similar amounts to money to what a a summer salesman makes in a summer. So this was my idea and I brought in a good buddy of mine and we were just kind of like, let's go hard for three months this summer in 2017. But how, how, like, where did you hear about an epoxy floor? I just, so there was this guy who was in my parents' neighborhood. They moved to Alpine, you know, right before I went on my mission. And I met a guy in that neighborhood who was really successful. I looked up to him a lot. And he had, he had done this when he was in college, um, you know, like 10 years ago for like just a couple summers. Okay. So that's all it was for him was what I was explaining. My first idea was, which is kind of like a side hustle, you know, make, you know, 20 grand in the summer, pay for your school. So you can ski in the winter and not be like working crazy hours outside of school. Right. So that's, I got the idea from him saying he had done it, but uh, I really kind of just took it and made it my own with my buddy. We, we figured it out on YouTube. We started knocking doors in the spring of that year. Yeah. So, so you just, right. Go out, let's do eat boxing. You just watch some YouTube videos and learn how to <laughs> make a floor. Yeah, bro. Yeah. We, we had no idea what we were doing. The first like three or four jobs we did were jobs that we got from knocking doors and like selling people on this before we'd ever done it for just like really cheap. Did you like practice somewhere or did you just like, we'll just knock it out the first time? Yeah. So the very first one we did that, that guy I mentioned, he was doing his own garage in his house and we came and kind of watched him do it. And at the time, uh, you know, we thought like, okay, we could do that. But as we, as we started doing it, you know, the way that he did, it was a very, just a very basic version. It's nothing, at all compared to what we do now. It, it wasn't a high-end version of it. So we got like a really basic idea from what he did. We watched him do it once and we watched YouTube videos. And then, yeah, the, the first job we did on our own, man, we just kind of free balled it and went for it. <laughs> and it, it was a shit show to be honest. Like the first couple of jobs were, were pretty wacky, but, uh, the, yeah, I, man. you have to start some, I, but that's, so you guys just yeah. knocked on doors and we're like, Hey, for real, you guys yeah. want a nice garage? We'll do it for you. Yeah. It was as bar- barbaric as it gets these days, man. There was, <laughs> it was just knocking on doors and that's, that's a grind, man. It was a, it was a grind to get the first, that whole summer was a grind. We were just kind of, it was probably three months into that though, where we were just doing maybe like a job a week that I started to see a huge need in the industry. And I started to get a view of like the contractor industry and construction and some of the issues that are in that whole industry, because I, I didn't grow up doing anything like this. I never had jobs doing like physical labor. Really. Um, I never saw myself doing something like this. Like I'm, I'm still kind of in awe that I'm, I'm in this contractor world as heavy as I am, but okay. There's a lot of opportunity in it, man. I've, I've developed a pretty big passion for, uh, for trying to bring some change to this whole industry. So I like it. And I want to get into that first. So, so like when you guys are knocking those doors, you got those first couple of things, like what do you charge for? An back, then, floor? back then we were charging like $2 a square foot for these coatings. So like a two car garage, you know, is like 500 square feet. So it'd be like a thousand bucks. Okay. Or a three car garage is like 800 square feet. So maybe $2,400. And then what do you guys charge three. now? Uh, we charge, we charge close to around $5 a square foot for the, uh, the typical garage floors we do. And those metallic floors are, are closer to $10 a square foot. Okay. So, and we, we definitely have a high end price, a high end system nowadays, but back then, yeah, it was as basic as it got. Right. We barely making any money on that too. So, so you're knocking on doors, you're doing garages. So, you know, you keep mentioning 
all the things you've learned and the things that you've like want to change in this industry. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of take me to like, after you've been doing this for a couple of times, you realize, Oh, I can make good money, but there's more to it. Kind of what was, what was that thought process? Like what helped you get? Like what were the cues I was seeing? And right. You know, I think, it was a lot of things, but one of the biggest things was I was just getting a lot of feedback from what I was seeing knocking doors, what I was seeing with the clients we were working with. We started like redoing jobs was the first thing that opened my eyes was I was seeing a lot of like really poorly done jobs. Okay. And there were these floors that were peeling up and flaking up after just a couple of years of being laid. And the more research I did and the more suppliers I talked to and the more I understood the products and the processes... Um, it's definitely something that can last like 20, 25 years if it's done properly and, and it shouldn't be peeling off the concrete and flaking. And so I just started to notice there was a lot of fraudulent stuff going on in the industry. A lot of guys doing, doing cheap labor. There's a lot of corners you can cut in doing these floors and, and the customers aren't going to know. So, and you know, there's great contractors on out there, but contractors are notorious for cutting corners. You know, a lot of people just expect out of contractors. So there was the cues of the bad floors. And then there was also just the cues from the experiences I was hearing from people, especially the, the second year I started doing it, which was full time. I started Lifetime Epoxy Utah in 2018 um, with, a, with a different buddy of mine. We started doing a lot of new homes and like new builds. And I was just getting this feedback from everybody who had just built a home that it was like a hellish process to build a home, that it was so hard working with the contractors And it was so behind schedule and everything's always late and disorganized and no one's on time and no one's responsive. And like the list goes on and on. Right. And I think a lot of contractors just accept that that's the way it is because that's the way it's always been. But me coming into it, I actually think, you know, it's been an advantage coming into the contractor industry with no background in it because I came into it with this fresh view of like how every other industry works, which like, you know, service has gotten better with technology, but with the contractor industry, service is still really poor a lot of the time. So, um, you know, that's long winded of me, but those are some of the cues I started seeing that made me realize there's, there's need for a lot of change in just the construction contractor industry in general. And, uh, I started to see that I I felt like I could bring some of that change over time. So, so what was the first step you took? To like kind of change your business more geared towards that. So yeah, one of the one of the first biggest steps we started making was trying to do everything in terms of our service, do everything the highest, the highest quality, highest grade possible way. So prepping the the uh, excuse me, prepping the concrete with the nicest equipment available, using the highest grade, most expensive pro, uh, products, using the best tools. You know, making the time frame take longer, doing multiple coats more than is maybe necessary, but what's required for the very best outcome. So that was the first thing we started focusing on. And that was a tough step to make because we had to really raise our prices and we didn't have much clout or or very many reviews or anything, you know, but I like the the clout. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't really have much of a reputation at all. Just, uh, we're young, (laughs) no background in it, but we knew we were doing it right. So that was one of the first things we, we started doing. And then and then really just pushing for for really good reviews, working with higher end clients. Um, you know, th- those were some of the first things we started to do. Yeah. Okay. When you started, like, was there a time when you're doing this where like you just thought, ah, this is too much work. I don't really want to keep keep going in this. Or were you kind of like, once you started, kind of on a high horse about it and kept going with it? Well. Yeah, there were definitely some some times right off the bat when we were first learning when it was like, this isn't worth it, man. This sucks. Like, this is a <laughs> lot of work. And we didn't know what we were doing. But then, uh, you know, and I, there, there were periods for the first probably year and a half where it was in and out of that, trying new products. And these products have like, just like time limits on them and they can harden up in the bucket and stuff. You got to get them down really quick. And it's, it's a little more technical than I thought it was going to be. So it you know, it kicked me in the butt multiple times. Every time we tried to like use a new product or have tried to change our system, sometimes it felt like it was, you know, multiple steps backwards when we were trying to take a step forward. So those times were tough. And there's been, you know, I've had two different, uh, two different partners in this that have, it hasn't been negative or anything, but there's just been changes in the company. There's been people in and out and those have been tough. You know, when it's a startup and it's getting off the ground, 
every person involved is super vital. Right. As long as you don't have too many people, maybe you have too many, but we, we didn't have too many. So there were times when there's just been changes in the company where it was really heavy, really difficult to, to press forward. I've really wanted to throw in the towel a couple times, but, uh, we stuck with it. Yeah. But, but overall it's <laughs> been, I've never been close to throwing in the towel, man. Like we're, we're going to win over time. Right. And I just hundred percent believe I like, that. I like your mindset. Yeah. You will win. Yeah. There's no doubt. I'm, I'm not the smartest in the room. And stuff usually takes me longer to figure out than maybe the person next to me, but I'll figure it out. And like, I'll, I'll win eventually. It might take me longer than, right. <laughs> than, than it would someone else, but I'm going to win. So okay, that's, that's the mindset for sure. So, you know, you're figuring this all out. You, you've got it going. You guys are doing a better job than the next person. How, what was the next steps you took to get your name out there? Like building your website, social media, like. Yeah. So, so the first year was really just doing jobs. That was it. It was barely a business. It was more just like a side hustle. Uh, 2018, when I brought on my good buddy, Matt Giles, we, um, we just, we went really hard from the beginning. You know, we, it became lifetime epoxy Utah at the beginning of 2018. We built a website. We started getting reviews from every client specifically on Google. And we've, we've got a, a really good head start on that in our industry um those those are some of the main things we started doing and then just working insane 2018 was the year like just worked ourselves to the bone mentally physically I never worked so hard at anything than to build kind of the foundation for this company so it was just a combination of putting in the time putting in the hours getting the reviews and we set a standard from ourselves from the beginning that we've maintained to this day that every single job like we're not going to accept payment from a client unless they're willing to give us a five-star review on Google. Um, I like that. And so we've had, we've had a positive experience with every single client genuinely since we started lifetime epoxy Utah. And I feel confident saying that on here. And that's a standard, you know, that I plan to maintain into the future of the company. And people have told me like, no, eventually you're going to get a four star. You're going to get a 4.5. But it's re- this is an interesting industry. Being in a service industry, it's really within our control. The only thing that would cause that, in my opinion, is if we expand too quickly, bring too many people on who aren't bought into our mission and our vision for the business. So, you know, that, that standard that we set early on in 2018 to this day has been a huge reason why we've been able to land some really big, cool jobs and, and expand our workflow. That's exciting. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so you're right now, I mean, I, I follow you guys on Instagram because I think it's very pleasing and someday I want to have my garage and everything. Um, so kind of explain, what is your what does your day look like now? Like your schedule, like what my are you doing? My personal schedule? Yeah. So I'm still, I have two other guys who are on right now and, and one of them is our superintendent. So he oversees our installs. So he's on those like five days a week on our on our installs and I'm in and out of those. So my days are not consistent. It's hard to say what's going on, you know, consistently day to day. But I, I'm still involved in, in a lot of the installs of the floors with uh, the two guys on our crew. So th- those two guys, are they like full time installing every day? Yeah, yeah, they are. And then you have a superintendent who watches, like kind of manages it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we're, we're ready to bring on a few more people. It's just about finding the right people because we've got the work for it. Um we're ready for more employees and to start expanding into multiple crews. But right now it's still just kind of a one crew at one job at a time. Right. We're, we're super booked and we have a few jobs every week going on. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm involved in the install still probably a good 25, 30 hours a week. And then, you know, I'm, I'm not doing a ton of the sales anymore. These other two guys are also really involved in, in bidding out our jobs and doing the estimations and stuff on the projects and they kill it with that. So I'm, I'm really involved in our marketing right now. I do all of our supply chain management, all of our product. We ship all our products in from a high end supplier and, uh, you know, and I still handle all of the, all of the financial and stuff for the business. So that I just, my day to day, man, is just a right. crazy mixture of all those things into one and a lot of phone calls. I like it. <laughs> Welcome between. to the world of entrepreneurship. Yeah. Not enough food, a little <laughs> bit of sleep. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, it's all good though. I love it. This is exciting. I think, and I can really tell you're passionate about it and that's why you've been successful. And I think like what you said with the five star reviews, you make, it's because you want to make sure everyone's pleased with your work. Yeah, for sure. You're not just in here like, 
I can whip out four garages this week and make eight grand and be yeah, happy. Well, and that's the problem with the industry, man. That's where it's a lose lose situation for the customer and for the contractor because they're just trying to bust out as much work as they can and do a bunch of money you know, a bunch in sales, but then they mess up jobs and they have employees who don't care. And so they spend all this money fixing stuff and they spend all this money not getting work they could get. And then the clients are not happy. It's just, it's a, it's kind of a mess, man. So uh, being focused on taking care of every client has paid back in so many ways. And we have gone to bat for some jobs, man. We've redone entire jobs before. We've never really had to go back and fix one that we did wrong. But there's been a few times we haven't met people's expectations and we've out of our own pocket, we've done whatever it took. We've worked through the night. You know, we've done some crazy stuff to get jobs done and to to get those five star reviews from people. But man, it's it's done wonders for our reputation for sure. We'll take, as, take care of everybody. So tell me, so like that's where it's at right now. Where do you envision this going? You know, let's in say in the next six months to a year, where do you see lifetime epoxy? Just yeah, man, I'm excited about the next six to to 12 months because we've put a ton of time the last few years into just building an infrastructure to to be able to expand. And and I feel like we're at a point um, where we're really ready to expand the company and our and our workload. So over the next six to 12 months um, and even into the next 18 months, I see us expanding from one crew right now, hopefully into three to four crews. Um, But I would really love to. uh, Um. The, the big plan is 12 months from now. I almost don't want to say this out loud, but I'm going to say it because you want this to be a, jur- a journal for it. me. We're, we're really going to try to get down to St. George and start a branch down there because it's blowing up down there. And I'm really confident we're going to be able to make that happen and also kind of expand our crews and things up here in, in Utah County, Salt Lake County, Park City area. So I love it. That's exciting. Yeah. That's it, awesome. It is really exciting. I mean, I've been watching you, you know, and it's just like, yeah, like this is a nice little side business set. Spencer's been doing yeah yeah but that's exciting that how like big you can scale this it is crazy man I think a lot of people are surprised because they look at it as like hey are you still like doing those floors (laughs) on the side you know and I I get it I would think the same thing but there's there's a lot of opportunity a lot of potential in this and it's been really cool to bring people onto it too and to make some opportunity so I'm I'm really looking forward to bringing people onto our team because we've got a we got a good thing going. There's a lot of opportunity in this. The, uh, you know, construction in the contractor world is there's billions and billions of dollars in it. Right. Um, there's, it's just got an interesting reputation. And I think, I think there's a lot of change on the way, regardless of whether I bring it or not, but I would like to be a part of bringing a lot of change to it and, and do it with a, with a good team of people. So I'm really excited to bring some people on and it's exciting to have the money to do that, to be in a place where this is, you know, supporting multiple people right now and has the potential to support a lot of other people and, and right. provide a, a work opportunity for them. That's not just like a side hustle, physical labor job, but it's actually a legit job where we're going to run this like a business and right. give people opportunities. It's, it's really exciting. It's fun. The most pleasing thing is being able to help someone else provide for their needs. Man, for real. It really is. And I mean, it's cool to think lifetime epoch, you know, your little, your flooring business has turned into something that can, um, help provide for other people and their families. Yeah. Yeah. For real, man. I, uh, I never expected it would feel so good to, to like write other people checks right? and know that they're, you know, taken care of to a point. And I really look forward to, you know, I, I definitely didn't start out with this grand idea and this deep passion for laying floors, but it's so much more to me than that now. Um, you know, I've developed such a passion for that, for building a team, building a culture, building something that people want to be a part of. Um, you know, I get, I get up stoked for that every single day, regardless of all the fires that we're putting out. And it's, it's hard providing a service. There's a lot of things can go wrong where it's not just, you know, a software or something. Obviously there's stuff that can go wrong with that, but where we're physically providing a service every day there's a lot that can go wrong on these jobs and there's a lot of fires to put out, but the, just the potential for what this can be for a lot of people involved is, is exciting, man. And for you, I'm excited for you. Like, this is awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. I didn't realize the extent it can go, but like just hearing, you know, I mean, these jobs are, I mean, to get a garage and it's not cheap. No. Yeah. But if you can learn how to scale that and you're doing great work and charge the right prices 
for sure. Have three or four teams. I mean, yeah, I think it's a luxury service and there's, we have some great competitors out there. I'm not one to dog on them. There's, there's a lot of luxury services out there, but in the contractor world, there's not a lot of luxury experiences tied to those services. You know what I'm saying? I like that. So that's, that's a huge goal of mine is to, if I were to talk like big long-term plans, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do it, but the, right, that's what I want to know. I the want... whole, yeah, the whole contractor industry, man, needs a makeover. Like all these luxury services that are being tied with like these negative, bad experiences. There's no reason for that. And what I think, um, you know, there's probably contractors who are going to listen to this and when, think when I'm, you say contractor, just tell me like, do you mean contractor I'm, for all contractors? Like just for epoxy? So yeah, I'm kind of referencing Definitely people who do epoxy, but you know, painters, carpenters, the okay. whole, everything that goes into building the house, all the subcontractors. Okay. There's great ones out there. I'm not trying to dog on the whole industry <laughs> for anybody listening <laughs> to this that's going to think I'm just like some arrogant young kid, but you know, the whole thing needs a makeover. And what I think a lot of contractors don't realize is that if you do a better job being responsive, being on time, taking care of people, it makes your life way easier. Right. I think a lot of people fall into this trap of like, no, it's just about making more money, doing more and more jobs. The more work you're doing, the better you're doing. When in reality, it's that's not what it is. If you can get into a market where you're providing a luxury service and you're taking care of every single person and you're not having as many mistakes, you're going to be making way more money with way less headache. And, uh, you know, three years into this, I, can, I feel like I can confidently say that I know that that's true. And it's, it's something I think can be scaled not only for our business, but it's a model that can be replicated for other contractors, for other subcontractors. Right. And there's a lot of opportunity for that over the next 10 years in my future now. Like I'm, I'm super zoned that, in on that. That's what I wanted to ask. So like when you say like the thing is the way you handle it and your contracting services, it's going to make your business do well. Right. Yeah. But you're getting into like all the other contractors. Like you want to make a change in the contracting world. Yeah. Like how do you imagine going about making a change? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. It's one of those, that's a question I ask myself a lot and I don't know, I don't know what the exact path is going to be, but I, I can say what I feel confident in that path is that the first step is going to be build to build something with Lifetime Epoxy Utah that people look at, other subcontractors look at and they say, damn, like, what are they doing? Right. And it's, it's going to get there. I don't think it's there yet. We're still pretty small time compared to a lot of subcontractors that do a lot more work than us. And do a lot of more a lot more in top line sales than we do but i think when we can get to the point where not only are we doing more in in revenue than them but our you know the people that work for us love working for us and they're working like normal work schedules they're not working late into the night they're not working weekends they're not killing themselves to do it but they love being a part of this company it's and it's an actual full-time career opportunity for them um that that's what i see as the first step so most of i kind of look at it as like i've got a roadmap. I've got this, this, uh, like road trip I want to go on, you know? And like, let's say I'm trying to drive to New York and I know, I know like on the map, New York is the destination, but I'm not going to stress about being in New York like every day. Like it's going to take me multiple days to drive all the way there. I I think of this journey as like 10 years from now, I know I want to be in a place where I'm making a huge impact in this industry. So I, I know that's like the destination for this road trip I'm on, but for the day to day, I'm putting all my effort and energy into building Lifetime Epoxy Utah to the strongest, strongest formidable company that I can possibly make it because that'll be, that's going to be the first step. And from there, I think there's going to be opportunities to start coaching, to start helping. There may be some software opportunities to make the whole thing better for all subcontractors and for customers. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different routes we could go, but right. I, I know the opportunities there and I definitely see that. You I know, love it. I love that you found something that you're truly passionate about and you feel like you can change and now you're going for it. Yeah, yeah, but for sure. Like you said, you know, I've realized in my businesses is just the more patient you are, and just allowing things to come to. Yeah, things happen better for sure. Because if you try to jump the gun, and make an app to help contractors right now, you're going to get too far ahead of yourself. Totally. But yeah, it, you got to like be patient in your long term goals, but every day you got to be super aggressive toward what's got to be done today and tomorrow. Because you know, if if you flip flop it, which is what we tend to do. We're super aggressive when we think long term and we get excited, but then, you know, we're like maybe lazy or we get down on ourselves or whatever in the short term, we're not going to get anywhere. So I, I try to stay focused on just being aggressive day to day, you know, and then in the long term, I know I'm going to get there as long as I kill every single day on the way. True. 
I love it. It's, t- it's really tough though. I would say that like I haven't figured it out and I, I definitely don't. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is like, the idea no is one, cool. no one has it figured out. <laughs> yeah, for right. sure. Yeah. And so, but you're trying and you see something, you see a vision, but like you said, you know, lifetime epoxy Utah is doing great. And the, where you want to go, I can tell like the roadmap you have planned out for it and how you're building will eventually lead you to the contractor stuff. But, like your business is crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's exciting. And so, you yeah, know, exactly for sure. I think anyone that were to hire lifetime epoxy is going to come out very satisfied with what they do or with the job you guys do. Yes, sir. So take care. Of tell it. people how they can contact you. Um, probably the best way is through our Instagram page at lifetime epoxy, Utah. Um, and we have a, we have a good website. If you're looking for work, you submit an inquiry on our website, but you can always DM us and, uh, you know, our phone numbers on our website, you can give us a call too. all, all of those things work great. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, I love your vision and what you're wanting to do. And so I'm going to bring you on again in six months to a year. And we're yeah. gonna we're gonna see give us an update on you know like if you went to St George or yeah anything that happened and then I look forward to that man because the St George thing will be a big jump for us so if we can if we can check back in and I can say check we we're down there we're making stuff happen that'll be exciting nice I'm excited and I'm excited to follow up with you and key and keep tabs on you and see how it's going cool man is there anything else one last thing you'd like to say for your future self to remember or to know or to hear back on maybe maybe not man i can't think of anything specific but i uh you know you go in and out of you can you can have a lot of fire at times and there's other times where it's extremely tough to keep pressing on and so um you know i i just got to do everything i can to to keep that fire and keep keep grinding every single day and making stuff happen um, and when I think about it like that, it's, it's attainable. I know it's just a matter of time. And I, I say that humbly. I think that's the case for everybody. If you stick to one thing for long enough, you know, you might do a lot of stuff wrong, but eventually all those wrong things are going to show you what's right. And so as long as you don't quit, you're going to win. I don't say, I don't say I know I'm going to win because I think I'm better than anybody or I'm like prideful or full of myself just because I, it's more just that I know if I don't quit, if I don't stop, like eventually this is going to start really working. Right. So every day is day one, just doing the best I can with, with all the little stuff and you know, it's, it's going to work out. So I love it. Thanks Spencer for coming on. This is Spencer with lifetime epoxy, but thanks man for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having fun. me, man. It's been fun. It's cool to talk through it all with you. I him. really enjoyed it. Go out with a little bumping dude. This is quest for dough. Subscribe. Give me five stars and keep listening. Thanks.